Hello everyone! Welcome back to the consumer behavior and fashion class. Last Tuesday, you have all of you, almost all of you except three students, uh, you have uh, submitted your third assignment that was also your midterm assignment and all of you did really really great job and I have left my comments under uh, the submission folder. Please check it out. And I could clearly see that you are with me and you are uh, listening listening to me and you are uh, really uh, bright and smart, you are intelligent and you are doing a lot of extensive research and many of your studies, there's your study topics were so creative and I have never seen those topics before so in that case I was really uh, inspired and I, I was really impressed to see all of your hard works, okay? So so I really appreciate all your hard work and I really look forward to seeing and watching your presentation which will start on week 11th, okay? So it will start on May 26th, okay? And uh, the presentation will be made on the Zoom meeting as it has been uh, announced like a week ago and I hope everybody uh, had seen the notice uh, which has been posted on the YSEC and I have um, uh, posted I have uh, posted your presentation schedule and I have some based on modification because one student uh, changed her position from week 14th to week 11th so the, everybody else's the order the schedule uh, of their presentation is all pretty much identical it is all the same so please check uh, on which day you are making presentation and if you cannot meet the day of your presentation, please let me know, all right? Okay, so this uh, presentation is about 5 to 10 minutes uh, and you can, uh, and it could be longer, you can take enough time to present what you have studied and you can uh, uh, introduce uh, your um, topic and what who you are studying about and with you are studying with you are having interview with and if you are in the progress in in the in the process in the progress of your interview and you could not complete your interview uh, on the day of your presentation that's absolutely okay you can talk about your consumers um uh, the psychographics and demographics and their uh, what you have observed from uh, your study of wardrobe observation and accompanied shopping and you can talk about uh, what topic that you you are interested in and what you are studying about okay so i look forward to listening to, pre to your presentation on the zoom and if you are um having any questions please come to the zoom meeting because uh today i have the zoom meeting as well and you can come whenever you want to and ask me questions about the presentation all right thank you so much and for today, we're going to talk about experimental studies and using experiments in consumer studies. And we are seeing some example cases of experimental studies uh, in the field of consumer studies. All right. So uh, on the in the last two weeks, we have talked pretty much about cognition and emotion and unconscious minds. So we are reaching very a uh, psychological approach to understand better about the hidden, hidden kind of implicit uh, needs or implicit um, desires of the consumers and which kind of experimental studies are revealing uh, those consumers uh, like unnoticed or unpresented kind of needs and what they want and what they really think about. So uh, we're still talking about uh, listening to their voice and how to uh, raise uh, their unconscious level to the surface level. So in that case, people like consumers could recognize what is mis missing in their minds and what is has not been recognized uh, throughout their uh, lives and they could present their ideas 
uh, in their own way and they and they could uh, recognize uh, what has been uh, thought and felt uh, by you uh, throughout your uh, lives okay so that was pretty much about uh, why we're doing experimental studies and why we're doing uh, observation based kind of studies so uh, this is a scenario based um, experimental study series of the day oh today we're gonna have uh, the third and the last uh, module of these examples of experimental studies and today for today's topic uh, we're gonna talk about the collective unconsciousness last week we had talk about um, the unconscious minds on an individual level but uh, we are surrounded by our society and the world around us so we are gonna go deeper uh, to to go further to think about the social the social influences and the social uh, like surroundings of of us are influencing our behavior at the same time we are influencing the others and influencing the society uh to change the uh, conscious mind to recognize their co unconscious minds and to change it in a more kind of desirable uh, kind of ways uh, in your point of view okay so the society is is influencing you at the same time you are responding but at the same time you are influencing uh, the society uh, with your ideas so uh, these experimental studies are discussing pretty much about that so today we are going to briefly discuss about experiments in unconscious nature of consumer perception attitude formation and behaviors in a social context and we're going to discuss about how collective minds like the group minds like as as a group as a group of society collective minds change our behavior and how you respond to external uh, social norms all right and we're going to talk about uh, some theories and the concepts and the terms like archetype and social schema what is social schema and conformity and conformity experiments will be uh, discussed pretty much and we're going to talk about self-monitoring theory and as well as the impression management and imp impression formation theory so how we are presenting ourselves uh, our um uh image our impression to others and to the society so that was uh, what you're going to do for today okay let's start okay so let's talk about the unconscious and collective unconscious collective unconscious is the concept that has been developed by Carl Jung and and last week we had talked about the we have compared what is the difference what is the difference of the theories of uh, Freud Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung and they have uh, applied the similar kind of ideas about unconscious minds but uh, what is different um, from those two theories is uh, what uh, Carl Jung has discussed further about uh, the social the social surroundings around us so as you see, uh, do you remember as you can see on the diagram uh, that that is the model the, the 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 famous model of unconscious collective unconscious of Carl Jung and and he had talked pretty much about uh, your ego which is uh, placed on the center of this diagram your ego is very central it is the center of your personal consciousness so you have your idea and you can can see who you are you can think of who you are and that is the natural outgrowth to be an individual so you can recognize who you are and you can recognize how you think about the phenomena around you so uh, your ego the central the central part of your ideas and yourself your being uh, will be surrounded by your unconscious minds that you cannot recognize but it has been also uh, surrounded by the social unconsciousness which is also called as archetypes so the archetype is a typical a uh, kind of um proposition of who who 
uh, who that person is. So how people behave and make judgment on others as a typical person in a group. So that is archetype. So uh, let's think of if you are a a librarian and if you a, if you are a teacher like your occupation is telling pretty much of what kind of person you are okay and he had also modeled the the psycho the personality traits and based on uh, many of the personality traits uh, he typified the people in 16 different groups that if you are familiar with MBTI and Carl Jung has presented the basic ideas of the categorization of the people like uh, if you are INTJ like INF uh, P and in, in that case, if you are in that category of your personality type, in that case, people have typical minds like like prototype, like archetype of those people. Uh, I know those kind of people. Those kind of people will uh, behave like that. And that is very easy and very like simple kind of categorization of the people. So if you think of the ideas of the the blood type personality you can see type a type b and you have you can make a certain judgment if you are blood type a and then oh that's that's why you're behaving like that you're type a and those kind of classification and making the judgment on then the types of your personality is called as archetype so it is somewhat problematic because uh, it is quite easy and quick kind of judgment that you can make on other people uh, but uh, that is the general unconscious kind of minds of the collectives of the groups of the people and they could uh, they are thinking like they could interpret they could um, understand who they are in a a possible way quick and easy way okay so that was a kind of a people's mind like group thinking of to understand better about the, the social environment and the phenomena around you okay so collective unconscious had profound influence on the lives of individual because that that is uh, surrounding you that is influencing you to think in certain ways and behave in their certain ways and we are the individual for living out its symbols and closed them in meaning through our experiences okay so that was the concept of collective unconscious that Carl Jung has developed and presented all right so uh, I have uh, like put uh, this interesting uh, music video and that is um, telling pretty much about what a collective conscious is so that was my understanding of collective conscious i'd like to share uh, this music video of pink fluid um pink fluid and i'd like to watch this music video for for a second uh, with you all right and you can glimpse, uh, we can have the glimpse of idea what the unconscious, collective unconscious is, all right, from watching this video, all right. <laughs>
Okay, that was pretty scary kind of a music video, but I have shown you those video because that is talking uh, pretty much about social construction and the socially constructed ideas of the people um, easily internalized uh, because uh, um, the surrounded ideas like socially constructed ideas uh, about those ideas, people will, um, firstly, they'll feel that is strange, that is nonsense for the first time, but they will become adapted, adjusted to follow those rules that is also called as social norms. Otherwise, they could suffer disadvantages. They're not physically like, um, like tortured or the, or the punished, uh, but, uh, on many different ways they could made uh, or suffer uh, from disadvantages that the society is giving to the individual uh, during those stages of the modernization especially and uh, people were trained in the way to be a brick of the wall and to keep the rules of the society and that way uh, people who are ruling the society strongly believe that it is um, natural all kind of way to adapt to the, the norms of the society and to keep the ideas of the collective unconscious so uh, we are thinking like that is strange and in that case and that stage we're calling uh, this uh, the second diagram of Carl Jung has suggested here is complexes we are in the in the in the stage of complexes we're thinking oh that that is strange but we cannot recognize what is the problem of this society so if you're finding the, your answer and your ideas and you are perceiving uh, what is the problem of this uh, word and then uh, you're gonna come up with your own individualistic kind of ideas to uh, present what you think and what you feel about the phenomenon around you so uh, what um, uh, Freud, uh, like Sigmund Freud has presented was the personal unconscious and, and Carl Jung is criticizing that that is not a personal acquisition. So it is not the idea that you acquired, you have made acquisition by yourself, but it is inborn. Okay, so what uh, the psychoanalyst uh, Zygmunt Freud uh, stressed and focused was the inborn kind of traits and their personality, uh, which is uh, setting the unconscious, unconscious minds as well as your uh, conscious minds. So that was the difference. That was what Carl Jung has mentioned pretty much. So Carl Jung said that I have chosen the term collective uh, because this part of the unconscious is not individual but universal so it is becoming even more scary because it is not only you lots of people are internalizing similar ideas and people are considering that is right <laughs> and that is uh, the right answer and those kind of ideas that was shared by the, the collectives unconsciously is called as archetype of the society all right so the collective unconsciousness is producing the archetype what people are understanding and interpreting uh, the people's uh, characteristics in certain way quick and easy way so that was archetype and that is universal a prototype of ideas that everybody share and everybody admit and the complexes is the personal memories and interpre interpretation personal interpretation about the archetype and their interpretation associated with the archetype is called as complex people are uh, thinking those kind of archetype is somewhat strange and it is it cannot fully uh, describe about my personal understanding so so Carl Jung has presented and suggested the examples of the archetypical kind of people's understanding about people 
okay for example like wise old man and the child and the mother and the maiden and so forth okay so if you think of the case of the mother we have certain archetype um mothers are sacrificing sacrificing themselves for their son and their uh, children and they are um, could uh be involved in unethical things so it is not socially acceptable kind of ideas that but mother could do that for their children so in case uh those beliefs the mother's beliefs is called as complex so that is not the a typical kind of ideas what mothers do like what mother like generous and kind kind of personality is involved in the mother's archetype but if your mother is somewhat different uh, from the archetype the like typical ideas like stereotypical ideas of your mother yeah in that case uh, people might think of the complex and and they're gonna uh, develop their ideas what they believe about the the role the the role model of the mothers okay so call you argued that each human mind retains this basic unconscious understanding about the human condition and the collective knowledge of our human beings like species like human beings in the construct of collective unconsciousness okay so so people generally believe what mother are behaving and that is called as archetype of mother, okay? Okay, so the social schema that we're calling is pretty much talking about it is uh, this very similar concept of archetype and stereotyped kind of understanding about the people or the events. Okay, so a uh, social schema uh, is a pattern of or thoughts, a pattern of thoughts or behavior that organize categories of information and the relationship among them. All right, and it is organized clusters of ideas about categories of social events and people. And Carl Jung has also discussed about the examples of uh, of these cases, like archetypes. For example, question: uh, Tell me about Rudolf the Second, and tell me about the librarian, and tell me about teacher. Tell me about mother and uh, people. What uh, people would come up with a very general and very universal ideas of those is called a social schema. Like people will answer with the ideas, like social, like collective unconscious kind of ideas of those people. Like, uh, for example, the famous painter like Giuseppe Archimboldo has drawn uh, those two paintings and that was very famous kind of paintings and it is uh, presenting the prototype the archetype of uh, the Rudolf II and who was very famous emperor empire uh, the holy roman empire but the thing was he was not very competent and he could not win uh win the various wars when the 30 years war uh, was going on on the those stages but uh, he was very interested in art pieces and his hobby was collecting art pieces and he spent the whole day watching the new painting and to be to interpreting and to get the sense to be inspired by those paintings and who loves who loved um really much of watching and 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 seeing the, the art pieces and that was the character the major and the central kind of characteristic central traits that people believe about rudolf the second so uh, lots of vegetables and and the flowers and those decorations are symbolizing uh, the abundance of the golden age that was the renaissance age when uh, the giuseppe uh, archimboldo was drawing the, those paintings so that was the the age the golden age the renaissance and they were uh, talking they were discussing pretty much about the old days of the roman empire and they have presented uh, what they believe and what they uh, interpret about those ages by uh, giving the central characters to those people so 
what people believe about uh, the characteristic of the historic of people, historical, uh, the person or the character is the central character only. So if we are thinking about the archetype of mother, archetype of the librarian that this painting is describing pretty much is uh, just like the archetype that we are sharing uh, generally, okay? So that is the concept of social schema, right? Okay, so now I'd like to introduce one famous conformity test, okay? So conformity means uh, uh, people uh, tend to conform to the ideas of the groups of the people or the social norms that uh, people generally believe and generally share, okay? So uh, that is called conformity experiments and lots of different versions of the conformity test is still going on, but I'd like to introduce this this experiment because that is original that uh, that was the first okay so Solomon Osh uh, has uh, presented this experiments to explain further about uh, people's tendency to follow the rules of the social norms okay so this is uh, this experiment was done in 1950 and you can see the picture uh, right here okay see so you can see the picture and you can see a line uh, having certain lengths and you have three different lines of different lengths and you can see uh, which line of these three is having the same length of the line that has been presented before. So exhibit one, uh, the line, and the, you can see the exhibit two, and you can choose which one is the same as the exhibit one, okay? So the right answer here is A. Okay, so A. But uh, this experiment was uh, done uh, by um, having lots of participants in a, a classroom, like in a classroom, and, and like 10 people were gathered in a classroom, but 9 out of 10 were actors. They're assisting uh, this experiment. They're assisting Professor Ash, and uh, they are just acting like uh, they are just believing like the right answer is B. So everybody else was saying that uh, the, the right answer is B, okay? So in that case, you are placed in that classroom and nine different people are all saying that the correct answer is B. What would you do, okay? <laughs> and and this experimenter, they have changed the lengths of the lines, uh, like pretty much like even making even difficult uh, for some some cases, and a uh, lots of a uh, series of experiments were done. And the thing is about. 75% of the people, because that experiment was uh, new to them, 75% of the people who participate, participated in this experiment uh, said uh, the right answer is B. <laughs> Can you believe that? Okay, so they cannot understand why the right answer is B, but everybody was saying that the right answer was B. Hmm. Okay, the, the right answer could be B. So you can think of that. The, the people who are sitting um, right next to you and they're saying B, 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 B. And 75% and of the participants said the right answer is B. Uh, you could not understand and it, you might think that is ridiculous, but it happened, okay? So what uh, Solomon Ash has mentioned is there is his uh, famous quote. I'm going to read this sentence, okay? Most social acts uh, have to be understood in their setting, okay? Setting, like in their context, okay? And a loose meaning if isolated okay and no error in thinking about social facts social facts social reality is more serious than the failure to see their place and the function okay so to be involved in the group like in especially in the year of 1950 uh, right after the world war ii lots of uh, people were Mm, thinking like uh, they like to be um, 
uh, like safe and stable in their position and they just like to uh, follow the rules of the society and those kind of ideas were pre prevalent on those age especially and what uh, Solomon Ash has found is that the conformity tends to increase when more people are presented okay so we have nine uh, like helpers like actors that are in the classroom how about 20 per 20 people were in in that classroom and saying that the B is the right answer how would you think? do that okay so and the conformity tends to increase uh, when the task become more uh, difficult so um he um, made some modification on the length of the the the, the lines and the three lines like um make the b line even longer and the c line even shorter and uh, people will be a little bit confused and they tend to follow the rules follow the ideas of the groups okay and conformity increases uh, when the members of the group are of higher social status and uh, you will be informed that uh, the, the person who is sitting next to you is a, a, a doctor a, a professor and professor said that the right answer is B oh okay okay mm. Okay, and, and that was his finding. And he also mentioned that conformity tends to decrease when people are able to respond privately. Okay, so you cannot listen to uh, others. Uh, you, can, you can listen to others' opinion, but if you could answer in a separate room. So after, after what others had uh, mentioned that uh, the right answer is B, you're going to be isolated. You're going to be on a separate room to answer that question. I do believe the right answer is A. Okay, so uh, people are following the rules not because they don't know the answer, but they uh, feel like they're safe if they're following the, the other's ideas in a group in a specific uh, setting like in this context in this um you know like setting and this era especially okay so that was the origin of conformity test so solomon ash from the conformity test has um discovered that there are two main types of conformity a uh, one is called as normative conformity and the second was called as informational uh, conformity that means uh, the, the the normative conformity means uh, you're gonna influenced uh, by uh, the social uh, like groups of the people like uh, their norms and general uh, beliefs and ideas so you are just following the rules of the others that is called as norm normative uh, conformity but in case you are asking for others to help you in that way to get the information or if you are uh, doing online shopping to get the reviews to see the reviews and get the information general information of the majority of the people uh, that is called as informational social influence is making you to conform to the ideas of the groups of the people so in your uh, just trusting what others are saying in a certain setting in the online environment of nowadays the online environment setting in that case you might be asking for the information okay but uh, the first one the normative social influence is saying that it is uh, they are setting the rule and they are saying that it is it is the norm it is what uh, people are supposed to do and those kind of persuasion is not very uh, persuasive you're not going to admit you're going to you're not going to accept those ideas just as solomon ash's line test so uh, you can see the video right here this this is updated version of normative conformity test and uh, this is saying that now until nowadays people are conforming to the ideas of the majority of the people what others are doing not because they don't know the answer not because they are just internalizing their ideas or not because they just um uh 
they're not conforming uh, inside, but they're conforming outside. They're pretending that they are conforming uh, to the, the ideas of the majority of the people because that is comfortable sometimes. And that is easy uh, to conform to the norm. And everybody is doing uh, something like an um, unusual things and you just follow the rules. Okay, so all right. I'll do that and those kind of conformity is going on so uh, this is very recent experiments of Dr. Berger uh, that has been uh, presented in 2008 and he had mentioned that people are uh, conformity, conforming uh, to others behavior just because all right okay so that is the experiment let's take a look at this short video and you can see the 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 girl the women the young lady in purple and she is the one she is the target to, of this experiment okay so take a look at it, what she is behaving conforming to the people's uh, like what others conforming to the others behaviors around her all right to answer that question, we set up a hidden camera experiment to see if this woman would stand up at the sound of this tone, simply because everyone else is. You might be thinking you'd never go along with this, or would you? After just three beeps, and without knowing why she's doing it, this woman is now conforming perfectly to the group. But what happens if we take the group away? Elaine, please. Now she's alone, the crowd is gone, and nobody is watching her, except our hidden cameras. What do you think she'll do? She's now conforming to the rules of the group without them even being there. Now, watch what happens when we introduce another outsider who doesn't know the rules. Have a seat and they'll be out in just a couple minutes. Thanks so much. She'll teach the new guy what to do? We kept the cameras rolling as more unsuspecting patients arrived. Slowly but surely, what began as a random rule for this woman has now become the social norm for everyone in this waiting room. Here to explain what's going on in their brains is Jonah Berger of the University of Pennsylvania. This sort of internalized form of her behavior is part of what we call social learning. Starting at a very early age, when we see members of our group perform a task, our brains literally reward us for following in their footsteps. When I saw everybody stand up, I felt like I needed to join them. Otherwise, I'm like excluded. Once I decided to go with it, then I felt much more comfortable. Conformity is how we become socialized, but it can also cause us to develop bad habits or repeat past wrongs. And it's why even this rebel who wasn't standing for any of this nonsense, eventually joined the ranks. And the only thing more shocking than seeing how easily conformity affects the way you act is that similar forces are subconsciously shaping the way you think right now. 
Okay, so people's a tendency to conform to others could be also witnessed, witnessed in their clothing behavior as well. Okay, so uh, this is one question that I got from one of you and you have asked this question. Why is his personality traits not shown in his clothing behavior? So uh, there might be a... Uh, Various uh, reasons why uh, his personality is not clearly shown on his behavior could be understood as this, um, like from understanding of this theory. This is called self-monitoring theory. You're monitoring yourself. Hmm. Okay, that means uh, you would like to present not the real self, but you'd like to uh, present the socially uh, like um, ideal uh, kind of uh, presentation of yourself. Could be uh, could be uh, like interpreted as important. Mm for you. So those kind of people who are presenting the image of what others want and what, are, what others expect in a different setting uh, is called as um, self-monitoring. So self-monitoring is kind of new and young kind of concept that has been established in 1974 by Dr. Um, Snyder and he had uh, defined this concept I like self-monitoring. Self-monitoring refers to individuals observation and their regulation and control of his or her expressive behavior and self-presentation uh, guided by social and situational cues. Okay, so you are presenting yourself in a differently uh, by the situational or the social and cues okay so you can think of the animal like chameleon chameleon is uh, uh, the the perfect example uh, which is showing which is uh, changing uh, his outfit all the time to conform uh, to the environment and and to hide the real self and present the more safe and more um, desirable a uh, kind of image of his self mm, to protect himself okay so um, individuals are willing and able to control their public expressions and shape their public appearances they want if they want okay and specifically self-monitoring captures one's willingness and adaptedness Okay, uh, at modifying their social image in line with situational demands. Okay, and behaving in with a a social role experiment expectation of others and their personality itself and their beliefs and their attitude is not important for uh, those kind of people like high self monitors and and those people are more pursuing the ideas of what others are judging on your appearance. Okay, so uh, the behavior of, of high self monitors uh, will be less dependent on his own personality attitudes or the values and instead be a function of situational cues that signal desired social image okay so that is the self-monitoring a tendency of the people okay Okay, this is pretty recent uh, kind of study that is published in 2001 and the title of this article is Self-Monitoring Behavior Affects Attitude to Fashion Brands so that was the study question okay and uh the article has discussed there are two types of the people uh, it is very um dangerous to typify people in two separate groups of, of high self-monitors and low self-monitors but it was uh, quite interesting if you're just dividing the groups of the people like in half like you are high you are low but you can we cannot say that but if you are comparing uh, those people who are just positioned at the very high position of your self-monitoring tendency very low position of your uh, self-monitoring tendency and compare those two groups uh, that is quite quite, quite a, a relevant and significant kind of comparison you see okay so uh, 
they have tell you by the people as the chameleon uh, groups of the people or the leopard uh, groups of the people and you can see um, that some people are chameleons changing their coat to fit into the social circumstances while others are called as leopards never changing their outfit and they're never changing their spots so they're keeping uh, their ap appearance consistent. They have their clear, their they have clear personal uh, style, distinctive personal style. So in case of those two different groups, they are perceiving the brand and the image of the brands all differently. Okay, so what is different? How much they are different? So in case of the leopards groups, uh, they are putting importance of uh, the one of a kind and a very consistent kind of uh, brand philosophy and the ideas of the brand identity is considered as important. And if they are uh, like evaluating the same brand like Gucci, in that case, uh, their um, analysis and their uh, evaluation and their attitudes that they're having, perceiving for those uh, the same brands, their evaluation is quite different. So the Leopards groups are saying that they are uh, too much uh, fashion oriented and they are changing uh, their style and the color and the main color of their presentation of their their early collections are uh, changing too much but in case if you're a chameleon you must be interested in the all different trying on all different styles and all different uh, kind of variety of the selections of the styles that has been presented as that is the fashion that is as and those kind of variety uh, could be appreciated for those kind of people, right? Uh, this is very interesting and very recent kind of study, experimental study, and which is discussing the how much beauty work uh, to putting on the makeup and getting ready for the work is considered extensively. That is too extensive. And and they have presented this scenario and they're talking about who Jenna is and uh, Jenna is 24 year old woman living in a small city and she is getting ready uh, for the work and uh, there are two different conditions and you can separate the two different condition the low effort condition for uh, doing her uh, beauty work is uh, the low low uh, effort condition is she is putting about 10 minutes uh, doing her makeup and get ready and another experimental like question like scenario is she's uh, putting a uh, more than an hour and 45 minutes on putting on her makeup and how extensive it is so uh, lots of people uh, said that uh, the B <laughs> The, the scenario B is considered as extensive. But what's interesting in this finding is depending on the appearance of this um, like scenario, like imaginary person that has been created, okay? Now here we have the image of Jenna. So this is experiment experimental uh, uh, study uh, which is dividing the group of experimental group one experimental group two and they were presented with these two different images and first one was uh, labeled as high attractive condition and the second picture is uh, labeled as low and average um, uh, attractive condition okay average okay and an attractive condition and people responded that uh, if they have seen the picture of a the first picture uh, people uh, stated like she likes to make sure that she looks good that is why she is spending more than an hour to do her makeup so that was considered as positive but on the case of uh, people were seeing the picture of the B the, the second picture uh, they were considering like mm, that is too extensive that is too much and those kind of negative evaluation attitudes were formulated in this way and that was kind of a like first impression and the impression and the appearance 
is influencing too much for people to make a certain kind of judgment and here we have even serious and tricky kind of question the question is, here is who do you think stole the company goods like papers and in the snacks and the, and the pens and the every every articles uh, in in the company and the, and the articles were stolen who stole that and many of people uh, mentioned that um B, <laughs> the picture B uh, would be uh, because uh, she is like um, deceiving <laughs> the people around her to make and to do her makeup for more than one hour, and and she is uh, someone like our deceiving kind of person immoral less moral and who might have a possibility to steal the company goods so that was kind of a finding and that is a sad kind of findings but the first impression and self-monitoring and uh, people's um, assumption to make uh, on somebody's appearance is clearly shown on this experiment so that was pretty much for today's class and we had talked about the collective unconscious and uh, what kind of experimental studies are um, going on to discover the collective unconscious and p how people are easily influenced by the people willingly or, or, or unwillingly uh, and how people are having certain kind of social schema, social schema, as well as the archetype of the people to make a quick and easy judgment depending on their beauty works, like their first impression and the person impression. So uh, we had talked about the self-monitoring uh, theory as well. Uh, that is why uh, people, uh, people's uh, personality could not be uh, clearly shown and people are deceiving sometimes about certain parts of their personality to present themselves in certain ways that was a part of the unconscious mind okay so thank you for watching okay i hope i could see you at the gym bye bye